Brains. Brains. Brains! No. No, actually, it's a uh, fractal design core 2300. Ah. Uh, we're building another PC today. We're building another PC. Yes, yes, I know my head is cut off, but trust me. Uh, well, or maybe not, but I'm trying a new camera angle again, and uh, let's see how this works. So, a friend of mine needs a well. It's you can't really call it a server because uh, it's using desktop components, but it uses. He, he's going to use it as a server. Uh, but he doesn't want to pay the money for a server, and if this thing is down for one or two days. Eh, it's not the end of the world, so should be fine. Uh, we're again going to be using a Ryzen build, and this time it's a. I'm not sure you can see that. There we go. Ryzen 2700 gives you eight cores, 16 threads. It's of the new uh, 2000 family, and this will be my first experience with it. And. Uh, should give you more than plenty enough of processing power to run a NVR for recording about 10 cameras, a file server, and then some virtualized desktops so that people can work remotely. Uh, I'm going to be running the system using Proxmox again because yeah, I've had good experience with it. And we're going to be using this 2700 on a... Asus Prime X470 Pro. It's um, a basic kind of motherboard, but it should be fine for 24-hour operation. And it has all the features I need. It's got some M.2, and it has an Intel Gigabit NIC. And, uh, yeah, that should be good. So, next to that we have one of the most important components. A GeForce GT210. Well, actually, no. This isn't a very important component. This is the cheapest passively cooled video card I could get, because the 2700 doesn't have a video card. Uh, next up, oh, yep, we need power. And I've always been a fan of Seasonic, and they haven't let me down yet. So a Seasonic Focus Gold Plus, it's a 80 gold uh, over 80 plus gold power supply, which should uh, give it the necessary efficiency and not uh, cause a lot of heat. It's semi-modular, but it's not important in this build because it's going to be a closed case anyway. And 450 watts is more than enough to run the Ryzen and a few storage devices. Talking about storage, of course, we need some RAM. And um, let me hold that right side up. This time it's a uh, ballistics tactical, yep, 32 gig kit. It's two times 16 at about 3000 megahertz. And we'll see what we'll actually be running it at. Uh, as I said, it's a server, but we'll see if the XMP values work or not. And running it slower isn't a big deal. So, yeah. <clears throat> then we need some storage. Of course, if you're running virtual machines, you want some plenty fast storage. So these are two Samsung 860 EVOs of one terabyte each, and we'll be running these in a ZFS mirror, so that if one fails, we still have the other. It's not a substitute for backup, but it does save you, well, a lot of downtime, and you know, if your backups failed for a while and you didn't notice, you're glad you have a mirror. And for storage, we have a single 10 terabyte Seagate iRemove. Uh, this will be used to store the data from the cameras the NV NVR will collect. And eh, if it crashes and dies and burns, um, it's no big deal. It's basically just camera data. So no mirror, nothing here. But 10 terabytes should allow you to store plenty of footage. We are using 8 megapixel or 4K cameras, which do about 5 to 6 megabit using H.265. But still, 10 terabytes should give you months and months of camera images, so no problems there. 
So, um, yeah, if you have any questions about the components or why I chose a certain component, please let me know in the description. And uh, I guess it's off to the time lapse. And uh, I'll think of something to show you after the time lapse is done. And uh, yeah, let's get right to it.
So, the build is finished, Proxmox is installed, and I've had the machine running for about a day without any issues. Now, let's talk about this build, because all was going pretty well, as you could see in the time lapse, until I wanted to install that hard disk. The mounting mechanism in this Fractal Design 2300 and the Seagate Ironwolf 10TB are not compatible with each other. The mounting mechanism thinks it can use the holes on the bottom side of the hard disk closest to the connector and then in the middle, or where in the middle there used to be holes. With these 10 terabyte helium fill drives, there's no holes in the middle, just on the outer edges. So the hard disk will hang uh, on two screws, which are secured in rubber grommets, which can actually move, and it's a dangerous situation altogether. Now, I didn't have the proper means to fix it right now. And I know the guy who this server uh, desktop is for, and he doesn't really mind the zip ties. It's a closed case. It'll be so, uh, sitting somewhere in an office where no one will look inside. And to be honest, the zip ties do keep the hard disk in place pretty securely. I did uh, fit some rubber grommets between the metal and the PCB and the rest of the hard disk, hard disk to decouple it from the case. And it'll last for years like this. Is it a nice solution and does it look neat? No. Uh, does it work and is it functional? Yeah, sure. Would I recommend you solve it the same way? Well, that depends on you. Um, as always, I'll have some zip ties linked in the description below. <laughs> and so, you know, other than that, I quite like the case. Uh, it's easy to build in. It's a budget case, but it, the construction is sturdy and all the cutouts and some stuff like that were in the right places so that worked out just fine so it's a fine case just if you're if you want to use modern three and a half inch hard drives eh, maybe look elsewhere as i mentioned proxmox is installed and it's running flawlessly on the ryzen 2700 the 32 gigabytes of memory is running at its rated speed of 3000 and the system has been stable for about a day day and a half and uh, seems to be working fine I have some test VMs on it and some test containers. I reconfigured the ZFS storage because I believe Proxmox doesn't configure it correctly out of the box. I made some blog posts about the previous server I built, which was a 2U Ryzen build. It should be uh, somewhere over here. And I'll have links to that video or those videos and uh, the articles and blog posts I wrote about that on how to reconfigure ZFS and how to do uh, GPU pass-through stuff like that which is perfectly applicable to this build also so uh, that'll be it for this build I'm hoping to do a next build maybe next month which will be a 4k uh, video editing station and it will probably be a lot nicer than this budget basic desktop server whatever you want to call it build so let me know if you have any questions or comments. You can uh, diss me in the comments all you like. It's a workable solution with the zip ties. It's not pretty, but hey, you run into problems you gotta solve. So let me know what you think and uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.